Hey guys, how's it going? It's Phil again with another video. This time we're going to build another computer. Now, this project is, is quite personal to me. Um, when I was a young teenager, I had a, a Pentium 133 with a 3DFX Voodoo graphics card. And back then, this card was just it. I mean, it, 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 it put 3D graphics on the map and it just demolished anything out there. And uh, you might be saying, oh, come on, Phil, get a Voodoo 2, get a SLI, get a Voodoo 3, whatever. No, I'm building a Voodoo 1 system. Um, mostly because of compatibility. I, I understand that most games you can get to run on a Voodoo 2. Sometimes you have to write a little batch file. Um, that's not really what this is about. This is not um, a system to build the ultimate computer system or a perfect authenticity. Um, it's just I had a 3D FX Voodoo as a kid and I'd like to build a system uh, along the lines and I want those games that I used to play back then. I, I want them to just work. I don't want to tweak them and get any driver updates and so on. So that's the mission of this uh, of this video, of this build. And I call it Time Machine. If you've seen some of my videos, um, you might know that I like to use modern technology and mix them up with old stuff. And this video is no different, especially when it comes to the storage. We're going to uh, look at some interesting solutions uh, for this system. Okay, guys, so let's begin. Let's begin with the motherboard. My choice of motherboard is a slot one motherboard. Now, you might be thinking, ah, oh, come on, Phil, a Pentium or Pentium MMX would be a much better match for the Voodoo. But it's not about uh, being a better match. Um, the reason why I like to work with slot one systems is they're really easy to work with. Um, they're cheap, so if you look on eBay, they uh, are plentiful, easy to buy, don't cost a fortune, even the good stuff. Um, they have really good uh, support. You can find all the manuals, the drivers are easy to find, um, latest biases. They're highly compatible. They can boot off the CD. They are to uh, year 2K compatible, AGB and all of that. So they're a real pleasure to work with. And you're also getting a really legendary chipset, the Intel uh, BX440, a fantastic chipset. In fact, it's so good that a lot of uh, emulators are based around that chipset. It's that good. In terms of brand, I'm using an A Open board. Now, A Open is a is a very good motherboard brand in terms of reliability. They never necessarily uh, were pushing the envelope like an overclocking and having uh, features like uh, AP to Aces, um, but really stable. They also always used really good capacitors, Japanese capacitors that didn't save to save money like gigabyte and went with the Taiwanese and then five years later all the capacitors blew up so with a uh, open you're getting a really reliable uh, product and a pleasure to work with and I'm not into overclocking anyway bit bit with modern parts or old parts I think it's just a bit it's a bit silly if you're getting old parts and then you're overclocking them um, just just go with the next best system if you need more speed uh, it's really easy um, okay, so that's the motherboard. With the processor, it doesn't have to be something fast or fancy. Go with something slow. Well, remember, this is the period uh, between MS-DOS and where things started to slowly move towards Windows. And most people had a, a Pentium, a Pentium MMX and maybe a Pentium 2. So uh, go with something slow, 200, 300. Maybe 400 megahertz tops, nothing more. The process I'm using is an Intel Celeron uh, 300. Now it's not the 300A, it's the uh, older one without the cache and plenty of grunt to feed the Voodoo 3D FX with enough uh, information and enough stuff to do. Um, the cooler I'm using is an aftermarket cooler. I purchased a couple of these on eBay and just keeps the processor nice and cool and also uh, it also looks pretty good not as dirty as, as some of those uh, you get uh, second hand just some standard ram i'm going with two sticks of 64 megabyte each bringing the total capacity of the system 228 megabyte of ram now 
the processor has a front side bus of 66 megahertz so there's no need to get anything fancy like a low latency memory just basic pc 100 ram uh, cheapest chips and most of you have probably got these lying around at home now when it comes to the graphics card you actually needed two video cards in the system if you had a 3D, 3dfx voodoo card and the way this worked you had one main card for your 2d stuff for your windows desktop for your uh, non 3d accelerated games and then a pass through cable would lead from the vga out of your 2d card into a vga input on the 3dfx voodoo and then the 3dfx voodoo had another vga output which then would go to your monitor and depending on what you were doing the 3d effects of voodoo would switch the outputs uh, back and forth so if you're playing a 3d game uh, it would take over control and the output would come out of the voodoo but if you were working on the desktop it would simply uh, pass through the video signal uh, from the other card now this is all analog technology and whenever you pass something through there's a loss of quality so uh, what is really important is that they have a strong vga signal to begin with that goes into the voodoo to minimize any loss in quality that's why i chose a matrox card uh, they had a very good reputation for image quality the ram dacs uh, that's the component that converts the digital information into analog vga signals they, they were always of high quality and therefore when you had a high resolution monitor you could really tell the difference now dos gaming com compatibility is very good yes there are a few really old games like maybe commander keen and stuff like that uh, and it might have a few issues with scrolling with those games but it's not a big deal for those games just build a 386 or something else uh, we are focusing specifically on the period between the late dos games and the early 3d games that used uh, the glide engine and a couple of very early direct uh, direct 3d games the video card i chose is the g200a it's a 250 uh, nanometer refined version of this chip which makes it very low power it only consumes four watts and therefore uh, you can use it without any cooling as you can see in the picture they simply did not come with a cooler whereas the cards before they ran a little bit warmer and needed a cooler on top and this is it the 3d effects voodoo what a card when it came out it just destroyed everything uh, there was nothing there was nothing out there that would even come close all the dos games used uh, software render 310 20 by 200 really pixely slow you wouldn't believe it you got this card you put it in your computer you got a 3d effects patch and the game was just like like on a different planet it, it was back then you had a voodoo and you were set it was it yeah. and it triggered a whole revolution in terms of 3d games after that um, uh, basically an arms race between uh, 3dfx and other companies started and uh, one one card nvidia was better and then the other card 3dfx was better again so it was it was a really 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 interesting time to watch and if you go back and go to sites like uh, Anantac or Tom's Hardware and you uh, read those old reviews it was just uh, a really magical time anyway the card I've got is the Diamond Monster 3D a very popular card many of you out there will probably have used the same card and not much else to, to talk about it it's a great card it accelerates games under DOS but also under Windows some of the earlier games like uh, the first Tomb Raider and Screamer 2 you you could just get a little a little patch an executable and run that executable instead of the the normal one and bam your bang, your game was high resolution had beautiful textures and was uh, smooth as butter under Windows, uh, you had to install uh, the drivers, and the game also had to had to have support for the for the card. Now there were three uh, st standards basically to for games to communicate with 3D hardware. There was a Glide. Glide was the proprietary 
uh, API from 3DFX and whenever a game supported Glide, you knew you would get top performance. Uh, it, it was it was faster on the Voodoo cards than any other uh, API. Then we had um, Direct 3D, that was the standard for Microsoft, and we also had uh, OpenGL, which was another standard, and some games used OpenGL, some games used DirectX, and some used uh, Glide. So it really depends what game you're playing. Um, the Voodoo had a leg up for a lot of games. It, it was the best choice to go with, but down the track that changed and you were better off getting a card that was stronger in OpenGL. But that's not really the point of this video. Um, at this time, between uh, DOS and early 3D acceleration, the 3DFX Voodoo was the bee's knees. There was nothing else around that would touch it. This part is all about the storage. Now, remember when this is called a uh, time machine? Because I like to combine new with old technology and old storage is always very finicky. Uh, you get read errors and uh, uh, the drives are loud or they cost a fortune. So uh, when it came to storage, I've investigated and researched and tried a ton of solutions and there are so many ways you can go SCSI, you can go compact flash, there are SD card adapters you can go with, PCI SATA controllers and all sorts of things. In this video I'm going to go back to using uh, ID to uh, SATA adapters. Um, very cheap, you can get them on eBay for next to nothing. Uh, you plug them into the ID port of your motherboard and you get two SATA ports on the other end and you can plug in two hard drives or two DVD drives or one hard drive and a DVD drive and that's uh, what I did in this case. Now the hard drive is a two terabyte. Yes, it is a two terabyte hard drive and I've prepared this with the C tools. It's, it's a Samsung spin point, Seagate bought out Samsung so the Seagate C tools software works on Samsung spin point drives. I've actually done a video on this before and if you run this disk you can turn the 2 terabyte hard drive into a 32 gig hard drive. How cool is that? So it gets picked up as a 32 gigabyte hard drive. There are no problems with BIOS limitations. Everything just works as it should. Same with the DVD drive. You just hook it up in, in, into the SATA adapter. It gets detected. You can boot from it. You can uh, play a game from it. Everything works beautifully. I just happen to have both from Samsung, um, there's no, no real reason uh, behind that. The other option was using a Blu-ray drive, um, I didn't want to do that and the Samsung optical drive was really the only thing um, I had lying around. The operating system for this computer will be Windows 95 and I'm going with the OSR version 2.5. Now that supports uh, FAT32 file system, which means we can use large partitions. And in my case, it's going to be a 32 gigabyte partition. The disk I created myself, uh, it's actually a boot CD, so I can just boot off the drive. I don't have to muck around with a floppy drive for this machine. Just boot off it and install it straight away.
Okay guys, so that's all hooked up. And that's usually uh, where I fire it up once and hopefully I get the good old post beep. I also check that the fan works um, and also that some of these lights are operational because sometimes you can wire them the wrong way. So the lights seem to be on, the fan's going. And that was the post beep, so that's looking pretty good. The hard drive is spinning. And let's see if I can open a tray. Fantastic. Alrighty, so that's good to go. So I'm gonna hook up the keyboard, the mouse, the monitor, and I'm gonna start setting up the software. And here we just uh, setting up the software. I go into the BIOS just to load all the BIOS defaults. I'm, I'm a guy. I, I, I like BIOS defaults. I'm not a much of a tweaker as long as it's stable. Uh, we don't need any any more speed. If we do, we'll just build a, a Pen M3 or something something better. Now we're just whizzing through the installation. Uh, I'm formatting formatting the drive again. Uh, I went to the FDisk beforehand. Just made sure it's a it's a 32. Uh, Partition, run install to install it. Um, I usually go with a custom installation. Uh, I remove most of the options, but some of them I like here. I just changed the region to uh, Australia. And I think I also changed the uh, graphics card to standard VGA because uh, I had a hunch that it wouldn't find the Matrox. Uh, so back in BIOS, I made sure that the standard boot device is the C drive now, and it's gonna boot back into back into Windows. Here you can see here you quickly saw the two uh, the hard drive and the optical drive getting detected, both uh, at UDMA 33. Okay, so Windows 95 is loading up for the first time. It's just a uh, whizzing through the plug and play. Here's trying to find some driver, which it didn't didn't seem to find. So, but it seems to continue here. I'm setting the time zone, another reboot, and we're pretty much getting to the end. Now, at the end, you'll see uh, me looking at the device manager with a couple of unknown devices. And that's really where this video today ends. Uh, and the next time we're gonna pick up right there with the drivers and I'm gonna show you uh, how to load all the drivers and then especially configuring the MS-DOS mode uh, so you can toggle between Windows and MS-DOS without any issues. And then it's all about, uh, after that, we, we, it's all about getting the 3D effects Voodoo uh, to work correctly.